Welcome to Tone Talk. Welcome to Tone Talk. Welcome to Tone Talk. How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore. I wanted to come to you today to talk about a new article that I saw come out of the Atlantic um, titled the 9.9% is the new American aristocracy and what I wanted to do also is talk about the rising caste system that we see in America whereby black Americans largely and other Americans as well but particularly black Americans are locked into the bottom in a way that we haven't seen in, in several lifetimes and just get real with you. So as I get real with you what I look at is I've shown you this chart done by Ray Diallo, one of the richest men in America. He, he, he had this in an article he did on LinkedIn about inequality being the most important issue of our, of our times. And what this chart shows is, is, I've showed it to you before, you know, the bottom line is time, the, the vertical line is uh, essentially percentage of wealth held. And this, the two lines represent the bottom 90% and the, and the top 0.1%. But as I told you before, it does not have the 9.9%. This is just the bottom 90 and the top 0.1%. And like I said, the last time these lines had the same amount of wealth, around 20%, was during the Depression. Well, now, essentially, we have crossed, and both groups have about 22% of the wealth. 22% is not enough wealth for the bottom 90% to have any access to American dreams. It's just not enough. And what I say to you today is, I've, said, I've shown you before, you know, writing on inequality.org, having to post, I sit at the center of this black wealth discussion in a way that, Really, I don't see anyone else outside of hard economists like Dark Hamilton and Sandy Darity um, and Thomas Shapiro. So I'm telling you, I'm not guessing. This is not a dialogue. You come in my, my uh, discussion section, just sit back and listen. What we see right now is black America is facing a major economic implosion. So as I say that to you, we're not just in the bottom 90. We're in the bottom third of the bottom 90. Let's be clear, just so you kind of understand. To access the top 0.9%, .9 you need to be worth like $1.4 million. Black America might have less than 250,000 families out of 20 million that are in that group. Out of 20 million black families, less than 250,000 are in this 9.9%. Understand that out of 83 million white homes, nearly 10 million, Nearly 10 million are worth more than that 1.4 million dollars. We live in a world where white America has largely eaten everything. And we're sitting around here watching James Harden and LeBron James and Stephen Curry, this brand and circus that'll happen next year like it did last year, like it will happen this year. And none of it is relevant. And I say this to you because in this new article, you know, the 9.9% is the new American aristocracy. What we see is he's saying the class divide is already toxic and is fast becoming unbridgeable. You're probably part of the problem. Speaking to white Americans that sit in this elite group basically hoarding all the wealth. See, I, I think that we don't really get honest and, and there's a great chart inside of this article where we understand US, the U.S. right now today has among the highest income inequality in all developing countries. But somehow we think that our kids are going to be better than us. That our kids are going to have the access that we have. That wealth is going to be alright. I don't see how any of that sits when the reality of wealth is what it is today. You know, we look at this thing and the U.S. has the highest rising intergenerational income mobility. Do you see what, come on, look at the chart. We right next to the UK and the UK got hard classes. They got hard classes. You know, when you look at the UK, you, you break down their classes into, into the royal family, the aristocracy, the baronet, the knight, the professionals, the gentry, the clergy, the yeomen, the husbandmen, the cottagers or the servants. They have hard classes in their country. We in America have, have, have sold ourselves on meritocracy when we're in the middle of a forming aristocracy. And black folks ain't in that aristocracy. We built one of the richest country the world has ever known for free as slaves and have no wealth. And everybody out here playing. When I look at this thing, y'all tell me that LeBron James matters. 
Y'all tell me that, that he did something the other day in the historic by playing basketball. I'm here to change the way you think about wealth and psyche and family in America. This is the most important thing you will see in the next month, regardless of the outcome of the finals. So I say this to you as I show you this chart. And as I show you this chart, what you want to notice is that the countries towards the bottom with higher levels of, of wealth mobility, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, homogeneous, mostly European, we sit at the top. We sit at the top with no access to mobility, with the idea that our kids are going to somehow escape our generational poverty. How are you going to make that happen? I want to share with you a little bit of a study that came out in uh, uh, Krugman. Krugman is, uh, was, uh, was an economist working under Obama. And what, what he said when he made this whole analysis around income inequality and intergenerational mobility, because what the chart does is it takes both of those things and says they both tie together and are locked up in America. There's no intergenerational mobility and the income inequality is at record highs in America today. That's not a good thing when you come from slavery and Jim Crow. You need things to be moving around to give that space for you to have a chance to change the, the, the forecast for your kids. I don't think we get it. Let me say this better. I know we don't get it. We living in a stupor like this thing is not about to get worse. Like tax cuts aren't about to set in come January. Like your sister ain't about to get a food box. Like your brother's family that, that, that needs those tax cuts is about to, isn't about to be shut down. The findings by Krugman say higher income inequality would be less of a concern if low income earners become high income earners at some point in their career. Or if children of low income parents had a good chance of climbing up the income scales when they grow up. In other words, if we had a high degree of income mobility, we would be less concerned about the degree of inequality at any, in any given year. But we do not. How, moreover, as inequality has increased, evidence suggests that year to year gener or generation to generation, economic mobility has decreased. Recent work finds that a worker's initial position in the income distribution is highly predictive of how much he or she earns later in his career. Another handy statistic for summarizing the connection between parents and children's income is the intergenerational income elasticity, IGE. I don't think we get it. I just wanted to come with you with a short video and kind of explain. We're not understanding the reality that they are locking us out of our own country. They have locked us out of wealth. In a sense, when you look at it, I'm going to give you guys an equation to kind of look at this thing and kind of be able to assess yourself. You better get real before it gets real with you. Deal with the data before the data deals with you. Shout out to Reg on that one. And so when you look at this thing, you have lineage plus current family plus income, and that'll give you your wealth. Lineage plus current family plus income, and that'll give you your wealth. What do I mean? You know, we understand our income. We don't understand how our income isn't moving. We don't understand how hard we're working for our income. We don't understand how, how little that stretches, but it's a number. The other two aren't so much numbers, but we've been ignoring it like it don't matter, and it's the most consequential thing in your life. The most big part of this equation now is lineage. But black folks don't live thinking about lineage. How are you going to do that and you're not angry almost daily about the reality that your family built this place, the richest country in the history of the world possibly, and you have no wealth. Not even enough wealth for your kids to be stable. So lineage, it looks at everybody from your parents back. And that don't stop just with your parents. It's not good enough no more that you just met your daddy that wasn't around and y'all learning how to have a relationship. Your kids can't eat that. That's not going to work. Understand we're talking inheritance and inter vivo transfer, gifts. New article that I just read talked about in 2018, white grandparents, uh, a married couple, are able to drop 150000 in a 529 account. 
That's what why school is so expensive. They paying with la with money from lineage. They are paying with money from lineage. You're paying with labor, trying to keep up. Understand that you got to know that you come from slavery. You got to know what that impact is. You got to know what Jim Crow was. You got to know about redlining. If you you have a choice not to know, you're just going to be depressed in a minute when you find out that how that locks in what your wealth is. Your wealth today is not determined by current family and income as much as it is determined by lineage. The first part of this equation, what is your lineage? Now what helps you overcome that, and we've seen it in recent times with affirmative action, government contracts, is programs and things of the sort that increase your ability to make a good income. Companies forced to share through taxation. A moment that we're not in and we won't be in for some years without major political changes. We're talking about where we're at now in America where Trump is president and just passed one of the most regressive tax cuts that will go into effect top of the year and really is somewhat in effect now and affect all of your lives. So lineage, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents along with your wife or significant others. It's not good enough no more to, to not have a, a relationship with grandparents, with grandfathers. I understand maybe you don't know who they are. Well, America don't got no space for you then. That's what's happening. I'm not here to be the, the, the person that's making it all bad for you. It already is because you don't have that wealth. You're competing against people whose grandparents are dropping in $150,000 into 529 accounts. And that's just a little piece of the gift. That's just one part of the gift. 50000 to put down on the house. They paid off the student loans. Oh, they bought the first car. Come on. This is not a game. The wedding gift was 10000 cash. This is America in the top 20%, top 15%. Across this country. You giving your grandmama $200 a month, and then they grandmama giving them $150,000 in a 529 account. It's not going to work. The math ain't good. So, you say, well, what can we do with it? Politics. Politics is the only answer. Only problem is, you got to wait for cycles to do politics. I'm talking about on a national level. I'm talking about on a state level. Well, you can get out in your local community. You can go to the food pantries. You can, you can, you know, help out and then try to get some food from the food pantries. But you won't have to do something. This sitting back thing ain't going to work no more. Let's come back to that equation. Lineage plus current family plus income equals wealth. What you got on that? So let's look at current family. What you mean, Antonio? What's current family? Well, I'm looking at your brothers, your sisters, your, your, your one-off cousins. I'm looking at your, your, your wife or your husband. I'm looking at your children. What they bring, what, what is the positive, the net positive in income or social relationships that they're bringing to you? Or is it all costs? Is it all jail time? Is it all drug problems? What's, what, 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 what is, is it all me helping you out because you work, work at Walmart and have three kids and I got to help you out because you ain't got enough? Is that where we at? Do you understand what that means? You already got a negative on that lineage. So you're not sharing money from your lineage with this person. So you got negative lineage, high level negative. Descend from slavery, come from Jim Crow, might not be your fault, but America ain't got time for fault. Then in this lifetime, you looking at the fact that your brother is in prison or your sister is on them stamps and they cut him back. This is, a, you, this is a lot to overcome. Your wife got student loans, 50000 She didn't have 25000 for the wedding, as they have in the customs, because she got bad lineage too. So, I'm not dealing with, how, with emotions right now. I'm dealing with the reality of the cost of blackness and what it means for this equation. In a world where we have no income mobility. You know, you take in the one, two, and the three, 
you taking the lineage, the current family, and the income, and they all negatives. I don't know how you expect that UCLA outcome. We not in 1988 no more. 2018 ain't playing. And I'm coming with you today to tell you what's your story. I'm telling you that America is forming a caste system. I'm telling you that as this Atlantic article shows, there's a rising aristocracy. And we not part of it. We built a country for other people to live in. And we okay with it. We giggling about it. Your role with wealth is to be the, the nanny or the, or the person that teach them about Beyonce songs. Beyonce and Jay-Z don't matter when a cast forms. In Great Britain, they're not thinking about no Beyonce and Jay-Z. None of that matters. There's not going to be no more rap stars. The job these NBA players are doing is irrelevant. The most consequential thing in your life today is black politics and the reality of black people not having wealth. Everything else don't matter. If you don't have a man in your life, a woman in your life, a person in your life that is making that clear for you, and instead you are watching the Cavaliers versus the Golden State Warriors and putting it on your Facebook, you got a problem coming. Let you, I just wanted to come with you today and have this conversation. Pick up this article, the 9.9% is the rising aristocracy out of the Atlantic. You get your own wake-up call. Please subscribe and donate at tonetalks.org. Please stay tuned in. I'm going to show you guys a minute and a half animated video to kind of make this clear in numbers and data. Tone Talks is out.